So here we go. Buttons the super dog laid quietly on the kitchen floor. Quietly enough, anyway, as she was chewing away at a bone, not leading, letting one piece of it go unchewed. She was worried. Every once in a while, she whimpered. There was something missing, and she knew it. Sleek and sinewy, Buttons was a tough dog, even though her size didn't really show it. She stood shorter than most humans' knees, except for the kids. She was over their knees. Her coat was beautiful, a fact that everyone fawned over her about. A brindle coat like the hyenas of the African plains. Or at least that's what Molly always said. Button's sense of smell was great. Her vision was precise, and her paws could feel the slightest vibration in the ground. All of the benefits of being a true superdog. Earlier in the day, the humans of her home left, and she was the only one left to guard all of the things. She was ready for anything, but really when left alone was when the anxiety set in. What if someone did come? What if she needed to protect the things? Would she be ready? Of course she'd be ready, she growled. She'd trained all her life for this. The bone crunched in her mouth again. Yes, she was ready. She could bite something that came, be it chipmunk, bird, or turkey. Yes, those turkeys were foul things. Every time they came through the yard, Buttons barked incessantly at them until they left. Super barks and ferocious growls were the tools to handle those pesky birds. That was for certain. How long had it been since the humans in her protection left? Three days? Four? She wasn't sure. She was sure they were never returning, though they always did eventually. Maybe years. Yes, years. That's how long it had been. She would be on the brink of starvation when they returned, wasting away to nothing. Button stood up, full on alert, and carefully walked the house, room by room. Starting in the hall by the door, she jumped up against the door to have a quick look outside. Yep, all clear. She barked once, just to scare off anything she couldn't see. Buttons was here, on the job. You all get away! Then she went through the kitchen, checked the level of her water, which might as well have been empty, and her food dish, which was empty. They did leave her to starve. That or to make her ravenous for any creature that would intrude. She was certainly more ferocious when she was hungry. She walked past the sliding door, glanced out the, outside there as well, but nothing caught her attention. No, tonight was so far a calm night. No telling what was in store for her, though. Buttons wasn't done, though. She marched on through the living room, the bedrooms, checked the doors and the windows twice to be sure, but nothing presented itself. So she returned to the kitchen, lay down on the fake tile, and chewed on her bone once more. But she wasn't resting or sleeping on the job. No, no, she was ready ready for anything. She would protect the things. Buttons jerked up to attention. Something had made a noise. What was it? Where was it? She stood up, turning her head back and forth, waiting for another sound to give her more clues. She sniffed the air, but nothing seemed wrong. She couldn't just let it be, though. She had to investigate. She did her patrol again. Maybe the sound was out the side door? Nope. Nothing. Out the back? Nope. Nothing. Into the living room she went. To the front door, the windows. Still nothing. She growled. She couldn't protect the things if she couldn't find the intruder. Or maybe they had already left. That was possible. She checked all the things to be sure nothing was missing. She couldn't count. She didn't even know how many things there were. All of her things were there, though. So that gave her some reassurance. The refrigerator dropped a block of ice in the freezer. She looked up at it. Ah, that's what had made the noise. She knew that sound. She growled at the refrigerator in response and laid back down on the floor. Hopefully that was the last disturbance. But even if it wasn't, she was ready for anything. Her bone cracked deliciously in her jaws as she worked her way around it. There was a morsel of food in there somewhere. She could smell it, and it would be, uh, and it would be delicious, as much as the sound the bone made in her mouth. She liked that sound. At some point, she lay her head down, relaxing just a little bit, but not sleeping. Her job was to stay vigilant. Nothing was going to stop her from protecting the things, but she was tired. The humans had been gone for years already. It would be years more, she was certain of it. She was groomed to be ready for this, for anything. Nothing would get the things. Nothing would harm the humans in her care. Even though they left her behind and she couldn't protect them when they were out. Couldn't protect them if they didn't take her with them. Buttons growled softly in her throat. 
Well, if she couldn't protect them while they were out, she would protect the things. That was her job. Another sound jolted her to her feet. She questioned the fridge, but it wasn't responding. No, not the ice maker. She checked the windows, the front door, the living room, the kitchen again. Still nothing. Then the side door, and right there, right on the railing, was a mean-spirited, conniving squirrel just looking at her. She growled deeply, thundering her disapproval through the vibrations, through the door. The squirrel looked back at her nonchalantly, like it was not worried about her or her disapproval. Well, maybe a bark would teach that squirrel. She barked, loud, ferocious. She put all of her energy into that bark, closed her eyes even in doing so. And when she opened them, the squirrel was no longer there. Buttons had vaporized another squirrel intruder. Just wait until the humans heard about it. She would be regaled with praise and showered with gifts for her skills. Vaporized squirrels were her specialty. Never once had a squirrel survived her barks. But that way they were just that powerful. Too powerful for those beer mortals outside. Buttons wasn't certain that was the only intruder, though. So she checked all the windows and doors again, just to be certain. No matter what she checked, though, no further intruders were found. She went back to the kitchen, grabbed a fresh toy out of her bin of things, and settled down with it by the couch in the living room. She ripped at it, tore at it with her teeth. Buttons found glory in the wonderful sound of ripping cloth. She had learned early on that only certain cloths should be torn, though. That time she ripped the couch side, earned her some stern reprimands from Benjamin. He was not happy about it, so she didn't do that anymore. But her things, she was allowed to tear apart, and she enjoyed that quite a bit. She tore through the... <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> uh... She tore through the cloth over and over again. Eventually, she could see the filling coming out. Success! She barked at her own glory. She was a ferocious superdog. She had ripped the toy apart until it was fully flayed. Yes, she was great at her job. The humans would be much pleased <clears throat> on their return sometime next century, but when they return for sure. She spread out the innards of the toy around the living room to show off how well she had done, then went back to her patrol. There was a squeak outside. She knew that sound. That was the sound of the human's vehicle made. Yes, that was it. They had returned from their journey, maybe with food. She barked excitedly, then remembered she had to keep herself under control. It would be no good to vaporize one of them with her bark. No, that would be very bad indeed. She stood, um, she stood by the side door. They always used that door. The front door was the distraction. It was where they sent those other humans they didn't want to talk with. Yes, the side door was the correct one. Only people who used the side door were ever permitted to enter. She stood impatiently there, waiting for them to come. She was there, ready to explain about all of her exploits. The ripped toy, the vaporized squirrels. Or was there only one? She wasn't certain. Well, better to be safe and assume it was more than one. They traveled in vicious packs. So it stood to reason that she vaporized at least two, but probably more like ten. Yes, ten it was. She had seen them. She protected the things, as was her charge. She did it. She saw Benjamin coming to the door and could barely contain herself. She leaped at the door, knowing that she wasn't supposed to do that. Benjamin looked at her sternly and said, Down, through the door. She returned to the floor. A moment of weakness. That's all it had been. Yes, a moment of weakness. She was a strong dog. A super dog, for sure. Buttons waited as the door opened and the human knelt down. How'd it go? Did you miss us? He asked. Benjamin. That was Benjamin. She knew his smell. Leaves, dirt, oil, and gasoline. His touch was firm and his hands calloused, but he touched her softly, caring for her. His voice was also firm, deeper than anyone else in the family. When he spoke, Buttons listened. Well, his voice, uh, and most of the time, she did what she was told. Yes, this was Benjamin. He grabbed her leash off the dryer, clipped it on, and led her outside to the others. When they came home, they always had her inspect the visitors to make sure they were safe and not bringing in any hidden squirrels or turkeys. She was certain they weren't, wouldn't, but why else would they bring her outside each time they returned? Squirrels were sneaky, and so were turkeys. The day one tried to impersonate one of the humans, she would know it instantly. Buttons did her duty. She sniffed at Molly, detecting the flowery cream she put on every day, and jerky. 
Molly always had a good smell, and Buttons liked to tell her that by licking her legs or arms when they were available. Then she sniffed at Jim. He was the smallest of the bunch, barely twice Buttons' size, but the only one that could rival her energy. Buttons would ro roll around on the ground with him all day if he wasn't taken away from her. He gave the best pets, too. Jim smelled like sugar most days. Theo was next. He was so tall, taller than Benjamin, but definitely not the one in charge. Buttons regarded Theo as present, but they rarely interacted. He told her to stop barking, stop jumping on things. He smelled like meat sometimes, though, bacon in particular, so she liked that. Otherwise, though, they didn't get in each other's business much. After a quick stop to pee in the grass, Buttons came to Archie. Archie was somewhere between Jim and Theo. Taller than Jim, shorter than Theo, and was also somewhere in the middle in terms of how he played with her. Sometimes he would roll around on the ground. Otherwise, he would hold her back and tell her to stop. Archie was the most confusing. He didn't have a pleasant smell most days either. Buttons checked each day, just in case. Finally, she reported back to Benjamin. She barked softly so as to not vaporize him, that they were all clean and safe. Molly smelt particularly good, she realized. So she returned to, to her, and Molly bent, bent down to pet Buttons for a minute. <laughs> she liked to be pet. Super dog that she was, she still liked the simple things. This was a time to revel in her accomplishments. She couldn't wait to tell them about, all about it. What was that smell? She caught whiffs of it only occasionally, but it was there again, then gone. Jerky, maybe. She liked a good jerky. Yes, it tore so satisfyingly in her jaws. She had to work on it mm. for a while, while, usually. Oh, and it was so good. She hoped it would be jerky. They all went inside. Buttons went first, squeezing past Archie, who forgot his station in life, but she reminded him by entering first. She stopped just beyond the door, waiting for the leash to be unhooked. Yes, a good job she had done, and now it was time to explain all the events. Archie un unhooked the leash, and Buttons immediately sped off into the house. She had to explain it all in two seconds before they lost their attention. She ran to the living room, dancing over each piece of the toy in turn, <laughs> then to the door where she vaporized the squirrels. The army of squirrels. Yes, that was right, an army. Then to the living room again, looking out the window on patrol, and then into the kitchen where she stopped suddenly. The humans had already been distracted. They hadn't even gotten in the door yet. Had they even listened? Huffing in frustration, Buttons ran through all of it again, evading Molly's hands as she tried to slow her down. There wasn't time to slow down, Buttons thought. They would lose interest soon. She had to get all of the details out. Toy, squirrels, there, done. She stopped in the kitchen again. The door closed behind Benjamin. She barked softly again so as to not vaporize anyone. Benjamin looked at her and put a hand out. She knew that gesture. That was quiet. Oh, she had nearly vaporized them in her haste. Oh, that was no good. Okay, she had to calm herself. Count to two. One, two. There, that's better. Oh, look, a bone. She picked it up in her teeth and brought it over to Benj Benjamin as penance. She didn't mean to almost vaporize them. She just had so much power to her, and they didn't even know how much she had to hold back. Benjamin took the bone and tossed it back to the kitchen. Buttons scrambled af after it, slipping on the fake tile floor of some to get started, and then slipping past the bone as she tried to stop and found the ground too slippery. This never happened, she was sure of it, but she recovered, grabbed the bone again, and set it down in front of Benjamin. Again, he picked it up and tossed it into the bu kitchen. Buttons huffed. He didn't understand. This was a gift. She wasn't just going to do this all night long. That would be tiresome. Still, she sped after it and picked it up. She slid again, but that never happened, and ran back to Benjamin. She set it down. Please stop throwing it. It is for you, she pleaded. But he threw it again. It broke her heart that he kept doing it. So she ran after it, slid again, even though that never happens, and took the bone into the living room. All done? Benjamin called from the hallway. Yeah, she was done giving him gifts only to have them throw, them throw them away. Oh, look at what Buttons did, Molly said as she came into the living room to see Buttons' masterpiece. She destroyed it! Molly sat down next to Buttons and held her close. Buttons reveled in it but was distracted. There was that jerky smell again. She liked jerky so much. Did Molly have some? She sniffed around, narrowed it down to her pocket. She nibbled tentatively at the pocket. Yes, that's where it was. Oh, Molly exclaimed and pushed Buttons away from her pocket. 
She reached in and pulled out a small square of jerky, just a little niblet for sure. Button strained at herself not to snatch it out of her fingers, but Molly held it down. What was it? She just had it. Maybe the squirrels? You're supposed to savor it, girl, Molly said, but she was smiling, so Buttons knew that everything was all right. Still, she missed the jerky. It had been ages since she had had a piece. Too long for sure. Maybe one day she would be fortunate enough to get another piece. Just a morsel. Just a chew. Yeah, she missed jerky. Molly was nice, though. Oh, and she smelled like jerky, especially her fingers. Buttons looked at them. Could taste tiny memories of the jerky there. Oh, she loved jerky. <laughs>